Yeah, Coach, I asked all the coaches this yesterday, too. But for you, at what point, if yet, has this become routine or normal to where you feel like you can do your job uh, on a somewhat normal basis and it's not so new to you? Yeah, I, you know, I would say after two or three days of, of getting on Zoom meetings with players and then with us as a staff getting together, and um, it started to become uh, normal. And I don't know what normal really is, but much more where you're used to, hey, this is the schedule, you know, and that's one of the first things we said to our players, try to map a schedule out. Don't just get up and say, okay, uh, I'm just kind of roll along with the day. Just set a schedule that you know you're going to, and, and it's, it's crazy. We've had a lot of our former players get on and talk, and a lot of those guys talked about, guys, this is like it is when you're in the NFL. You, you get up after the, in the off season, it's, I got to have a plan. I got to have a, a map my day out. And that's what we've really been trying to get our guys to do is map your day out so that it becomes a little bit more normal. And I think after two or three days of us as a staff doing it, it's become where, where we kind of know what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. And just one more, then I'll be quiet. From a more football-specific perspective, when you're rebuilding an offensive line, you know, kind of with five new starters, how do you balance trying to play the best five players but also having guys that fit at natural positions for them? Yeah, you know, that'll be interesting because Coach Riley's really going to have to work on how, how do we get the cohesion that you need from those five guys. Um, still trying to find the actual best five players, but the bottom line is who can play together the best. So I'm not as concerned with do we have who the who would say, well, there's no doubt that guy is the best left tackle. I'm much more concerned with how do we put the best five out there that can communicate and play together. You know, that was the huge deal with us last fall was was those five seniors all were in it for each other. And and we've got to find five guys and hopefully more like seven or eight um, that can legitimately get out there, play for each other, communicate well together, and then and then physically knock people off the ball and 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 win their one on one battles. But they got to do it as five. Go ahead, Frenchin. Yeah, uh, Courtney, um, oh, you mentioned fall, last fall. Overall, just give us a sense for what you were most pleased with offensively last year after you're looking over all the tape. Yeah, well, two things. One, the buy-in that, that uh, the senior class had, because um, it could have been very easy for those guys to want to say, yeah, but we called it this or we called it that. But, but that senior class did a phenomenal job of embracing us and trying to learn a new system. Um, you know, the other thing that I, I was obviously, it's easy to point to, but I was, I, was, I was very happy with the way we took care of the football for the most part. And I was very happy with our ability when we were in the red zone to, to figure out ways to put points on the board. Uh, there were a couple games as we've looked back, if we could have scored touchdowns rather than field goals, could have definitely changed the outcome. Um, and that, that'll be something we'll continue to harp on. And Coach Kleiman talks about it a ton. And that's scoring touchdowns when you're in the red zone, not field goals. And that takes me into my second question. What specific areas do you feel like the offense needs to improve the most coming into the fall? And what is the sense of urgency? I mean, when you guys get back on campus, having to uh, implement and get everything ready to go? Well, the hard part's going to be, uh, with with so many new faces being in the and obviously the old line people talked about, but the backfield, you know, we got Harry and we got Tyler Burns back, and and we got some young guys that we really feel are going to be good football players. But mm -hmm. all of them, it's going to be it, it's going to be a process where they're all learning how do I fit. Um, so it's going to be interesting for us. The first couple of weeks, whenever we do get back, has got to be a big install. But from a coaching standpoint, we've got to do a great job of evaluating what, what do we do well. Um, because there's no way without spring ball, you don't know exactly how fall is going to be or how summer is going to be. There, there's no way you're going to be able to install the entire offense. So we've got to install what we can do well. The problem is there's a bunch of guys that we don't know what their best features may be until we get out there and start practicing. Hey, Courtney, I got a two for you here. First off, after you studied what Skyler did last season, what do you think is the next step for him as a quarterback? Uh, continually taking more ownership of, of who we're going to be on, on a given week. And, and that means uh, allowing him to not per se game plan, 
but definitely have input on in that game plan. If it's third downs, if it's uh, what I feel the most comfortable with from a quarterback standpoint, I'm talking in, in from his perspective, if it's, hey, I don't believe there's their DNs play are as athletic as I am. So, so there may be weeks where he would say, hey, I, I want more zone read or power read or more, more run game where he's reading somebody. Um, you know, we're, we're somewhat, uh, I don't know, uh, we, we pick and choose when we want him to actually be a, a specific ball carrier or, or in the weeks where he'd say, no, it's all on the table. Um, and part of that's going to be his understanding of what can I do against the players that we're playing against. And as he keeps growing in our offense, he'll have, he'll have more and more input as he wants it. And, and that's, that's where, where if we're going to be as good as we, we want to be, he's got to keep growing from that standpoint. And it, it seems like Harry Trotter is uh, the natural, you know, veteran leader of the running backs now. How confident are you that he could handle something like a starting role next season? Oh, I, I think he'll be able to handle it. You know, I, I think he's, he's very good as far as uh, having blinders on a little bit as far as just focusing on the task at hand. Um, you know, that being said, he, he has done a good job of continuing to reach out in, in this. Obviously, we're in an interesting situation here. He, he didn't get to lead uh, out there on the football field for spring. Um, but I think he's done a good job of, of reaching out and engaging with his teammates. And, and that's a huge part. Whether he's a starter or not a starter, that'll all kind of shake out as the fall comes. But I think he's ready for whatever role he gets handed. Yeah, Courtney, uh, stretching the field last year was a challenge in the passing game. I see you have, what, six or seven, six of seven returning wide receivers. You only lose Dalton Schoen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How confident do you, do you feel in that area of the game next next year? Well, I, you know, I'll, I'll bet you we've got 10 wide outs that, that I feel like need to really compete for, for playing time. Um, but I think there are four or five guys that, that jump out pretty quick that you feel like they can make big plays. And um, I want to stretch the field a little bit more on, on it, be it throwing the ball down the field. You know, uh, Texas Tech, uh, as an example, we had a huge play uh, that really in the, near the end of that game that, that kind of busted it open. Um, you know, obviously the start of the game against West Virginia, uh, we, we threw a big ball down to, to, to Dalton for a touchdown. Um, we've got to do a better job throwing some of those balls down the field for, for big plays, but we also got to keep getting the ball to, to guys uh, out in space that can go make big plays happen. You know, I talked yesterday actually with Josh Youngblood a little bit about, you know, the big plays he made as a kickoff return guy. We've got to get him in those types of space with that type of space from a receiver standpoint. And if that's handing it to him on the speed sweep stuff, or if that's, uh, uh, throwing it to him out there on a on not just maybe a screen but on a, a eight yard route and then he he's got space so he can go get forty that that'll help us stretch the field a little bit from a big play standpoint even if we're not throwing it sixty yards down the field. Yeah, with Josh, we we talked to you before the Liberty Bowl game and you talked about his potential. Just where is his potential at now? What what impresses you the most about him? Well. Uh, the good thing that, that he's really done, and I talked to Jay Ray, uh, Coach Ray, quite a bit about, about Josh and the wideouts in general, but, you know, Josh has really done a good job of getting on the video and watching things on his own. And, um, you know, with technology, it's crazy. I mean, everything that we have can get, get – uh, uh, those players have access to. All of them have iPads. All of them have the ability to watch – and, and learn from what they did last year. And Josh is one of the best at, at on his own, getting on and watching tape. And, and that's why he's going to continue to grow as not just a, obviously he was a big time phenomenal playmaker for us, especially in the kick return. But I think he's going to keep growing as a receiver because of his desire to just keep learning. Of course, you've got, you know, no spring football right now and, and limited time around Will Howard. <clears throat> Pardon me, but when he was here, what was your impression of how Will was kind of fitting with the program and uh, acclimating himself to K-State? Um, it, it's kind of – he he's done a phenomenal job of already in, in that five-week weight room time changing his body. And and you'd say, well, how much can that happen? Well, he, he got out of playing hoops. 
and, and not that there's anything wrong with playing basketball. We want a guy to run up and down the court and be athletic, Hell, the best athletes in the world to play basketball. But, um, you know, I, I, I was surprised that in five weeks how much his body started to change. And that's a, a credit to his desire to go work right away. He could have easily said, hey, put me over here in this group and I'm just kind of kind of kind of feel my way around. But he attacked it, and, and he started to see change. He gained about 10 pounds in that short time, um, and it's good weight. You know, it's kind of crazy the way the technology is now, their ability to scan those guys and see just what they're, you know, oh, you gained 10 pounds. Well, six pounds of that was fat or four pounds was, was muscle, and his was obviously in the right, uh, did it the right way, where he didn't just come in and all of a sudden have this great training table. He came in and actually packed on muscle weight, which which was phenomenal. Coach, you talked earlier about um, a schedule, uh, putting these guys on a consistent schedule every day. What does that schedule look like? And when you compare it to an NFL offseason, as you said before, it's a little bit different because those guys have access to, you know, top tier trainers and top tier yeah. equipment. So how do you kind of work around the fact that guys might have varying levels of home equipment in addition yeah. to keeping them on that consistent schedule? Yeah. Uh, two, a couple things. First, you know, we, we talk to them, make sure you know when your academic schedule is. You can't miss tutors. You can't miss any of your mentor sessions. Obviously classes are a little hit and miss. Not as many classes are, um, zoom based uh, lecture settings as I kind of anticipated there would be a lot of it is is giving them assignments and, and them having to make sure they get it done and get it emailed in but first obviously was to set up the academic side but the second part they've probably spoken on the phone more with our strength staff than they have with our, our coaching staff um, we, we run uh, zoom meetings and and we'll have all of them together uh, from like a position meeting. The NCAA allows us to have uh, a number of hours that we can have position type meetings, but our strength staff's been on the phone with them more than we have individually talking about what is your setting? Um, do you have a, a bench at home? Do you have the, uh, uh, dumbbells? What do you have? Um, so each guy's got his, his mapped out a little bit through our strength staff. Um, the bigger thing though for me with that schedule is um, I still am a big believer that you're going to grow and you're going to going to have gains if you'll sleep from 11 o'clock at night till six in the morning. Well, that's not the average young man. I mean, they're up at midnight or one or two playing games uh, uh, online that, that they're playing with their buddies. Um, and it's stuff that I don't know anything about hardly. But what I'm getting at is it's trying to get them to understand that I know life has changed but if you can map your day out and include everything from when am I going to eat um, what type of nutrition am I getting in uh, okay I'm going to work out a lot of our guys it's crazy they're working out twice a day because just what do you how do you fill the day um, so uh, map those times out and actually specifically write them down um, and and most of our guys that are having success are trying to then talk to their their teammates about set a schedule, man. Let me help you set that schedule. Uh, obviously, the first part is we need them all academically uh, in good shape. So they got to do that first. But but after that, it's what fits for you. Um, and it's kind of amazing when you see nationally, you, you see everything on Twitter and you see guys uh, with their dads uh, uh, out building the dang gym out of uh, uh, in their garage and stuff. It's you know, a lot, not everybody can do that. Not everybody's in that position, but everybody's trying to find their own way to keep working out, which is really, really kind of cool. Go ahead, Ryan Black, if you had something. Yeah. Uh, hey, Courtney, how are you doing today? Good. Hey, so my question is, and it kind of goes back to, you've been asked about Skylar a couple of times. You know, we hear, you know, at every level of the game, you know, how important it is to have a veteran quarterback at, at any time, but how much more so is that true right now, considering the circumstances under which we're in? I mean, how much, how much more pressure would there be on you if there was a quarterback battle right now and you guys didn't have a whole spring to do anything? Well, and, and the quarterback battle would, would have been an interesting setting, but it's, it's really more, do you have two or three, even if you did have a quarterback battle, do you have two or three guys 
quarterbacks or not that aren't afraid to reach out, not afraid to get out of their comfort zone a little bit when it comes to the scenario that we've been, we've kind of been dealt. And to this point, and it'll all kind of show out much more when you get to fall, but to this point, Skyler's done a phenomenal job of trying to be um, th that team leader, trying to be not just an offensive guy, but trying to reach out across both the uh, special teams, defense and offense and, and say, guys, we got to stay focused. Football's going to come. We don't know when. We don't know uh, how how the exact setting will be, but but there's going to be football at some point, and and we got to be ready to roll when that when that does come. Got time for one or two more? Anybody has anything? Yeah, uh, another one, Courtney. Um, yeah. First time in more than three decades, K State's going to have a completely new offensive line. <laughs> We've seen what Josh Rivas can do, but can you give us any indication on other guys that we might not know about that, um, you know, well, have, have impressed you guys? It, um, you know, really, uh, I, I've told some people, and I think they think I'm, I'm crazy, but uh, I think there are some aspects of our line that, that we can actually improve uh, on from where we were last year. Um, when you look at you know, Cooper Beebe as an example, you look at KT, um, you look at uh, getting Dawson Del Forge. Um, you got some uh, some dudes that are all going to be well over 300 or 300 plus pounds. That you know we're hoping that we can, and that's one of the things we were hoping for spring ball was find that that th those guys that can knock people off the ball a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. That can maybe be um, I don't know the, you know true quote road graders. And and I'm not saying that that's the style of football that we're only going to try to knock them off the ball, only run between the tackles. But I, I do think we've got, I don't know, between 10 and 12 old linemen that are all going to battle for starting jobs that, that can make us a, a pretty darn good offensive line. The problem is all, all of them, you know, obviously you could say Josh was really a, a, a part-time, if not a, a, a could have easily been a full-time starter. But other than that, there's not a lot of guys back that have yet proven themselves. But we feel good that there's there's 10 to 12 guys that are truly going to compete. The the bad part is we don't know whether it's going to be three weeks to get ready, if it's going to be, hey, you get a summer and you get to get a fall camp to get ready, or what that is. So we do have to, as we as we kind of started this with, we got to really uh, use two weeks to figure it out and then get ready to start game planning on what we can get done. Anyone else? All right, Coach. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks guys. Stay Thanks. safe, everyone. You too. All right, we got uh, Coach Klein on here as well. Um, whoever wants to start out. Yeah, Coach, um, I appreciate the time. Um, Coach Messingham had really praised Will Howard for putting some size in the weight room so far. How have you perceived him coming along? I know – it's a unique situation, but since he got to Manhattan, uh, at least at one point early. Yeah, no, uh, Will's done a great job. And, and obviously, uh, uh, you know, really was, I was really excited about, you know, his potential, even through the recruiting process, just understanding kind of his, his makeup. And uh, he's a very organized uh, learner, thinker, um, processor and so um, watching him come in and uh, not even just the weight that he added but kind of watching his body change you know I think it was you know came in right around that 215 ish mark you know put on about a little over maybe that he was probably closer to 220 but uh, now he's up to like 226 227 and then like I said not just that seven eight pounds it was the uh, the composition of it. I mean, you could tell his just his definition and his lower body, um, you know, had really improved even just in that uh, winter training session. Colin, hey, how are you doing, man? Hey, Scott, how we doing, man? Doing great, man. I hope, <laughs> hope your family's doing well. Um, what do you find yourself emphasizing more now to Skyler in the absence of any live reps during a spring football practice? And how challenging is it for a competitive quarterback to improve at a time when you can't see any tangible fruits of your label labor on the football field. Right. I, I mean, it's, it's definitely a challenge and it's, I think it's uh, none of us have played or coached under these circumstances before, as far as just trying to create 
um, as many, like you're saying, learning opportunities as you can. I mean, you know, we were doing some even just assignments uh, two days ago. I gave him an assignment one night to go through just some, uh, you know, different cadence stuff in the mirror, you know, <laughs> just trying <laughs> to get uh, actual reps kind of walking yourself through it and, and just trying to be creative like that, you know, for an older guy, you know, having been through what he's been through and, and uh, he's able to superimpose himself on the tape pretty well. Uh, so just watching more and more tape and, and just going through and getting as many mental reps as you can. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a challenge and we're, we're doing the best we can. Hey, on a positive side, what kind of blessing is it that you have a proven quarterback who's entering his senior year who's familiar with the system? Uh, it's, it's big time. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's like exactly what you said. I mean, second year in the system, uh, you know, already been through it, has a lot of reps under his belt uh, in live scenarios. So, um, you know, obviously still uh, missed the practice time. But, um, you know, I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to make the best of it and, and got that experience is, is a, uh, very important. Colin, what would you say uh, is the biggest challenge for a quarterback when he has to play with five new offensive linemen? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can't just at any, at any position, you can't substitute experience, you know, and, and those live bullets, uh, I say all the time. I mean, it's, uh, you know, sometimes there's, uh, things pop up when those live bullets start coming at you that, uh, you know, you just haven't experienced until you're out there. So, um, but, you know, I think I'm excited. I think uh, those young guys have really uh, done a nice job rising to the challenge. I know Noah Johnson has, has done a tremendous job stepping up and providing, uh, you know, leadership that obviously losing a lot of seniors uh, naturally happens. But, I mean, he's done a great job of, organizing film sessions with those guys, creating a lot of communication between, you know, those, those old linemen, but then also those old linemen to Skyler. And uh, so they're already working on it. Um, it's going to be a process. I mean, we all want it to happen and that uh, gelling factor to happen a heck of a lot sooner than later. But, uh, you know, we're going to walk through it uh, one step at a time. Coach, in general, how comfortable have you become with the recruiting process, you know, at this current time? And how do you feel like kids on their end are responding to what they're dealing with without visits, et cetera? You know, I think it's, uh, for a lot of things, I think it's just been, it's just put everything on pause. You know, I, I think, um, you know, we've been just like everybody has, I mean, really making an aggressive effort to try to do everything like we would. We were in person as far as, you know, trying to get as good of an evaluation on these on players as we can, trying to build relationships virtually, you know, as as best you can. Um, honestly, it, it's been it's been great for us to to kind of build that infrastructure, so to speak, to be able to do that with recruits. Um, it, it's probably better than I was expecting, but walking into it, uh, it's obviously not as good as you want it. Being able to shake their hand and have them on campus and really get to know them in person. But, um, you know, I think from uh, the hard part is just it's, it's hard for young guys and all, impossible really to, for them to make decisions and final decisions and move forward with things until they actually get, you know, their feet on your campus. So uh, it's put a lot of things on hold, but we've still been able to develop good relationships and, and, and push forward. So. Oh, and you've given a lot of uh, speeches before big games in your K-State career. I'm, I'm curious, at, at this time at Kansas State, when there's doom and gloom and a lot of uncertainty right now, what would be your message? What would be your speech to Kansas State fans right now during this time? You know, I, I think the biggest thing is just be patient. You know, and that's uh, it's not really rah-rah, I guess. Maybe if that's... <laughs> But, um, you know, we, we just got to be patient. We got to hang together and all this. I mean, it's, it's going to end. It's, you know, we're going to play football this fall. And, uh, you know, and then, and then when we are able to get together, let's, let's make it one heck of a family reunion. And, and you know, on our end, it's, it's going to be making sure that, you know, we're as prepared as we can uh, be under adverse circumstances. And then, 
uh, obviously is when everything's safe and everything's ready to roll, then, uh, you know, we, we, we pack that place out and, and come back together like never before. Anybody else? Yeah, another one on Skyler. When you rewatched tape of last year, just how did he grow as a passer and where can he improve even more this year? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, he made some massively big plays on third down. I mean, you know, we had we had some possessions that were saved in, in third and seven to 10 and third and 11 plus that, uh, you know, statistically are really, really tough situations that he really uh, made some big plays for us and continued drives that, you know, ultimately were able to, you know, to win some games for us in, in the past game, which was huge. Um, you know, I think just even going back, even the more we watch, you know, I think uh, the trust and continuity amongst our, our guys between quarterback and receiver, I think got a lot better. Um, you know, that one comes to mind, that touchdown he threw to Sebastian on the kind of the deep over route at Texas Tech. You know, I mean, you look at when he had to let that thing go, um, you know, I don't know if he lets that, that thing go as early as he did and has to trust in him if, if it was week two or three, you know what I mean? And so, um, and I think that's going to do nothing but, but improve and just that, that trust and continuity with all those guys, Sebastian, Malik, Joaquin, um, you know, all those things, because it, it happens so fast and, and there's got to be just a high level of, of trust and confidence both ways, you know, that they're going to go in on the route and we got to let the ball go. And I think, um, I think that's something that we'll see improve, um, you know, as we move into next season as well as, uh, you know, Scott does a great job of extending the play and making off schedule plays um, and balancing that of when to hang, hang in the pocket and, and be able to just wait that extra half second and get it out of his hand and, and knowing the, the fine line that is that balancing act. So, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of things as, as always, but, uh, just proud of how he's attacking it and dissecting it and, and, uh, and working on his craft. So I'm excited to see and uh, get out there on the field. I have one last recruiting question. You kind of referenced. Yeah, no problem. You know, thank you. Kids having to, you know, make decisions about seeing things. Have you guys talked about the possibility of more uh, decommitments, switch commitments of this period as kids are committing to schools they haven't even seen, you know, going forward? Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely a um, – could be a real thing, you know, I mean, so, you know, people making decisions now on sight unseen and then, you know, October rolls around and they've been able to get out and then, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, it's just, it's, it's all uncertain. I mean, again, I mean, we're trying to really uh, take time and build relationships at that, at that grassroots level. Um, you know, so uh, I, I hope, and I hope that, we're not going to face a lot of that, but that could be a trend that, you know, uh, who knows? Like I said, it's all, uh, is this is all new. So we'll, we'll kind of see how it goes and watch it. I got one for you, Colin. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what do you see yourself stressing with the, the, the backup quarterbacks next season, whenever they get on campus behind Skyler? Well, I've already been stressing it to them. And, and fortunately, I mean, my room, um, is, is the same, you know, January 1st, my room will, this last January 1st, it'll look the same as it does this August 1st, you know, which is kind of cool, uh, from the standpoint of I've got six guys and it's, it's going to be those six guys. And, and, uh, I mean, my message from day one is, yeah, you know, Hey, we got to compete, you know, and, and it doesn't matter if you just got here and walked in the door or if you've been here for four years, I mean, it's, you've got to act and prepare and carry yourself like the starting quarterback. I mean, we all know Skyler's going to take the first snap, but at the end of the day after that, I mean, it's every single day and everything you do, what I told them in January to whenever we report for camp or summer or get started or whatever, um, you know, you've got to prepare like, like you are the starting quarterback and, and you're competing for that, for that job. And you never know when your day's going to come, you know, I mean, uh, that's that's the life of a quarterback. I mean, it, I always thought it was harder to back up than even start just because you never knew when, uh, hey, get in the game and you had to grab your helmet and go kind of a thing. And so, and, and those windows are small because 
uh, you know, it's a, uh, the trust of your team is so, is so important and it's so fragile. And to earn that trust, those windows are small. And so when your number's called on and if you're not ready and you don't answer, sometimes that's a hard thing to earn back. And so that's what I told them. And, and they've been doing a great job. And uh, we got a couple guys that, um, you know, I'm excited to, to see how it all shakes out, but they'll, they'll be ready to go and, and uh, uh, excited about it. So. Go ahead, Ryan. Uh, well, that was basically, Colin, that was what my question was going to be about the backup spot. But I guess specifically, um, how close was it at the end of last year between Jaron and Nick at that point? And I guess how much did you really expect Jaron to potentially push to, to get to the number two by the end of the spring if you guys have been able to go through practice? Yeah, no, I mean, I think um, it, it really varied by the day. You know, some days it was really close, and, and some days, you know, we felt like Nick's experience really kind of gave him the edge, which is why he, you know, stayed in that in that uh, number two position. Um, you know, I think uh, the longer that competition goes, I think the better they'll both get. And, uh, you know, hopefully – um, you know, some of these young guys will, will put their name in the hat and, 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 you know, Will and Max and Bart and or whoever it ends up being, you know, uh, c can push those guys as well. So, uh, you know, we're going to have to get a good evaluation for, you know, three to five, six practices to see who's, you know, like you're saying, going to be those two that are going to compete and then ultimately, you know, get whoever is going to be that number two guy ready to go. So, Anyone else? 